Hello, and thank you for joining us here on The Neutral Zone. I am Phil Milani, joined as always by my trusty sidekick, my partner in crime. Really, the best way to describe this person is my everything. It's at Eric Dalala. Phil, good to see you. Good to be back with you in person again. Yeah, I hope everybody enjoyed last week's show because we're back in person in the same studio. Science is amazing, Eric. Some people said it would never happen, but we, yeah. we believed I had my doubts. Yeah. You know? As you should have. I had the Zoom set up. I, you know, I had that thing going. You know, I was in a routine. I was in a rhythm with it. We can go back to it if you want to. No. Okay. Uh, okay. No. It's okay. much better in person. Uh, I can hear what you're saying, actually. Yeah. You know? You still don't listen, but you can hear it at least. Yeah. Those two are different things. Yeah, different. Are, yeah. Very different. Yeah. I don't listen. Yeah. Uh, well, we're continuing our countdown to camp series. Uh, last year, we talked about... Hey, maybe this Broncos team on paper is last the, year, Phil. Last week, you're, last week. Sorry, you're living. I, you're living so far. Past, yeah, I mean, it, it feels like a long time ago. Last week, we talked about if this year's team on paper might be the best Broncos team since they won the Super Bowl. We said yes. We did say yes. We, we went through yes. it. Yeah. So uh, if you're if that's interesting, you're like, whoa, that's an interesting topic. Go back and watch last week's or listen to last week's. Yeah. Uh, Eric, a there's a lot shorter. of way. Yeah, a little bit shorter. These episodes are about 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah, a little more well, palatable. More like a commute. Yeah, maybe like a little taste of the neutral zone. Yeah. And you come back, we get back for training camp, and you yeah. get the whole enchilada. Well, see, we're using professional microphones again now, so people can actually hear. Kind so of an odd concept. We can't go too long, otherwise you'll just, that's too much. Right, Yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, we're going to continue uh, our countdown to camp series here today. We're going to be talking about what would be a good season for Von Miller. That's, you know, he's back, he's healthy, had a pretty nice off-season program here. What would be a good season? You know, what, everybody's been uh, enticed by this idea of what would Bradley Chubb and Von Miller look like on the field together playing for Vic Fangio. Well, maybe this year we'll finally find out if they can both stay healthy. Yeah, and I kind of view this in a few, maybe two different ways. One is, what's a good season for Vaughn as a 32-year-old player? What's like, hey, uh, claps for you, you did a nice job coming back from your injury, and what's a season that you want to re-sign Vaughn Miller and keep him here in Denver mm -hmm. and continuing to play at a high level? I think those might be two different things. To, to me, I think if he were to get to like eight sacks, you'd say, hey, Vaughn, like, you came back at this age, you came back off a, a really, I, I don't know if traumatic is the right word, but a difficult ankle injury, and you posted eight sacks. Maybe in that case, like, Bradley Chubb is in the 14 to 15 category. You've helped this pass rush. You've stayed healthy. To me, that would say, hey, nice job, Vaughn. You, you, you did a good job. I think if he gets double-digit sacks, to me, that would be excellent. I think in that case, you're talking – hey, this is a guy that we can probably bring back. And I don't think it's out of the question, Phil. I mean, DeMarcus Ware, in his 10th or 11th season, came to Denver, had 10 sacks. And we've seen guys still able to do that at this age. So certainly not out of the question for Vaughn that he could prove that he's worth uh, keeping around for a few more years. Yeah, this one is a little bit tricky for me because – it's not like we've seen Vaughn's play diminish, really. Uh, it's just that he's had this injury, you know. And you might hear eight sacks and be like, what? Von Miller's better than eight sacks, you know. But if you look at his numbers, you know, a baseline for Vaughn is like somewhere around like 12, I would say, is like a good average for him. Like his best season uh, over the last couple of years, 2018, he had 14 and a half. But uh, other than his second year in the league, uh, he hasn't really had a crazy season where he's d put up a, an astronomical number. He's usually right around like 14, you know, 13, right around that mix there. So if you just ask me, okay, put a number on it, I would say if he could get to 10, I'd be like, that was a good season. I, I mean, I think that, that that would be a good season for Vaughn. But if you ask him, you know, he said that, he has the same mindset that he had this time last year, you know, where we saw him come into training camp with this, you know, really big body. He had, would look like he was in the best shape of his life. 
Vic Fangio said that was the best shape that he'd ever seen Von Miller. And, uh, you know, you ask him, hey, how are you doing now? You're 32. You're going into your 11th season. I think he said that he was out on the practice field still whooping everybody up out there. So, And you heard George Payton say the same thing, that, hey, if you watch them all do wind sprints, Von is still beating everybody out there. So you have this maybe perception of, okay, maybe Von will take a step back a little bit. He's getting a little bit older. But there's not that evidence there to suggest, okay, we should be expecting an old Von Miller instead of, hey, this is Von Miller, one of the best pass rushers in the NFL. No, I agree. And I, I like I said, I do think it's very reasonable to expect he can get to, at the very least, eight, which is really the, the fewest we've seen from him in a full season back in 2019. I know he missed a game or two then, but um, yeah, I think he's fully capable of getting to like that 10, 11, 12 sack mark. Um, and maybe he surprises everybody, Phil, and goes out there and, you know, leads the NFL in sacks for the first time or, or goes crazy if Bradley Chubb is able to get back and, and be the guy he was. For me, Phil, the, the other thing that will make it um, a good season for Vaughn is getting back to those forced fumbles and game-changing plays because in 2019, he didn't have one of those. I think it's the only season in his career where he did not have a forced fumble. And you could just feel that year that like the Broncos needed a game-changing play from him. Even when he had a big sack, it was like, man, if, if the ball could have just come out, it could have changed the complexity of an entire game. I mean, you think back to 2018, for example, you're playing the Seahawks and he's ripping the ball away from Chris Carson. That's a game changing play. You're playing in Arizona and he's blasting Josh Rosen. That's a game changing play. And that wasn't that long ago. We know he can still make those, but if he could have two or three forced fumbles to go with those 10 to 12 sacks, to me, that would be tremendous and get back. It, it, it probably earns the Broncos a couple extra wins. Just, just him doing that because you know, we've seen how much those plays can mean. Yeah, uh, the thing that makes Von Miller special isn't just sacking the quarterback simply. It's that he goes above that. You know, in the Super Bowl, he was like, I'm not just trying to sack Cam Newton here. I'm trying to strip the ball away and make a game-changing play, change the tone, you know, uh, bring that extra added element. And he's done that his whole career. I mean, whether it's intercepting Phillip Rivers or, you know, stripping Chris Carson there, that's what makes Von Miller special. And if he can get back to that, then this defense is going to be really good. And you, you ask some of the guys in the secondary, hey, what would make this a good secondary? Well, they have all said good secondaries take the ball away. And so it's more than just, hey, uh, we played good defense. We got a couple of sacks here. Can you make those game-changing plays? And I, that's what makes Von Miller special. And now that he's getting into his 30s, you know, and playing uh, this late into his career, now maybe his game's going to change just a little bit. Maybe he's not completely blowing past tackles, but – he should be a little bit smarter, wiser, had maybe some more moves to his arsenal. You know, uh, maybe he's doing things a little bit differently, but gosh, he seems still like that physical freak. Yeah, I think two things work in his favor. One is that this secondary, like you mentioned, it is loaded now. And so if a quarterback has to hold the ball an extra second, that's going to give Vaughn and Bradley Chubb a chance to get there, which they may not have had a year ago late in the season. Obviously, Vaughn wasn't playing, but just in general, when the secondary's weaker and you can just, we've seen Derek Carr do it for years to the Broncos, Phil, just kind of the three-step drop and get rid of it in a couple seconds. I mean, it's just hard to watch. It's irritating when the secondary's better and they make you double pump or whatever it might be, there's your chance to get the game-changing sack or strip sack. The other thing that works in his favor, I think, Phil, is I, I talked to DeMarcus Ware a couple weeks ago and he said, he thinks that th this was kind of contrary to what I would think. I would think that as you get older, like maybe you can still use your power moves, but your speed diminishes a little bit. He thinks the speed element will last longer for Vaughn than like a power rusher. Cause he says at a certain point, you just get older, you get beat up, you can't push people over. So DeMarcus, when he changed or when he got older, he kind of changed to use some of those spin moves some more of that kind of, uh, you know, the bendy moves that we see Vaughn do so well and lost a little bit of weight. He thinks Vaughn has trimmed down a little bit from where he's been and thinks that that speed is still there. And so it's possible that maybe Vaughn Miller's skill set lends itself 
to being successful for a few more years here into his 30s. Yeah, I mean, you talked to Ware in the past, and he said, you know, you start to have a better feel for the game as you get a little bit older. And uh, I remember he used to say, like, early in the game, you're setting up the the tackle. You're feeling him out. You're saying, okay, what if I do this? What if I do this? Then later in the game, you use that against them. And so maybe we'll see things like that from Vaughn where he's just a little more crafty. That's a word that people like to use with wily old, old vets, the crafty. You know, they do. I think yeah. that that's something uh, that could be uh, uh, said about Vaughn maybe coming up here in this uh, part of his career. Eric, I'm curious what you think, though. What's the Bradley Chubb factor going to be here for Vaughn Miller? Because you you can't double team both these guys. So somebody's going to have to be on single co- in single coverage. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it kind of depends on his health, right? At his best, we've seen Bradley be really good. 12 sacks his rookie year. It took him a while last year to get to the point, I think, where he was comfortable and then obviously dealt with the ankle late. I hope he's able to hit the ground running in training camp and be back to his normal self because if that's the case, you know, it is possible that Vaughn's going to get more one-on-one attention um, and, you know, maybe deal with an occasional chip, but those guys should make each other better. And it's hard for me right now sitting here to say which guy is going to end up with more sacks because I think they're just both – so even they do things in different ways um, and then you talk about Draymond Jones in the middle he could pick up some sacks because of the attention that's paid to Vaughn and Bradley uh, so we'll just have to see there but I, you know it's not just about Vaughn staying healthy he needs Bradley out there to realize his potential this year yeah a little bit different when it's like Malik Reed on the yeah. other side not that not to knock Malik Reed there it's just that when you're an offense game planning you say okay we got to worry about Bradley Chubb you know, that's not necessarily the case here with Malik Reed. Uh, but with Bradley Chubb, you're you're worried about that guy. Right. Last year, seven and a half sacks for Bradley Chubb. And then the one season that they were both healthy and played together, 2018, they combined for 26 and a half sacks. So in the the record for a Broncos duo is 29 and a half. And that was Vaughn and Elvis Dumerville in 2012. You'd like to think that if all goes well, Phil, they can challenge that record, Bradley and Vaughn, that is. That's got to be in play, I think, that for, for these guys this season. You know, it's weird to rem- rem- think this ba- back so far, but it was just a couple of years ago when Vic Fangio was hired and Khalil Mack had that crazy season in Chicago, and the buzz was, gosh, can you imagine what this is going to look like? And we just haven't seen it yet. And so uh, even though it's Vic's third year here in Denver, this might be our, our chance now to finally realize how good of a defensive mind he is and how he can really set things up for these pass rushers. Yeah, I'm excited to see it. Yeah. So so what what's the final number here? What's a good season for Vaughn? Um, I think if he gets to 10, that would be good. I think if he could get to 12 and have a couple forced fumbles, I'd be uh, – be signing up for more Von Miller. Got it. And he says he's a Bronco for life. So he's this is sign the last another, year. He's got to sign his, another contract. This is the last year of his contract here. So, you know, probably not getting that set in the market type of deal here for the next one. But if he has a pretty good season, I'm sure that there's going to be mutual interest here. So I know that George Payton said that bringing back Vaughn was that was a no brainer this year. So let's see what that next contract might look like. And yeah, I, I would say 10 is the, my benchmark here. If he gets to 10, I'm like, that was a really good season for Vaughn. Maybe a couple of forced fumbles, maybe a fumble recovery, a couple of special plays here and there and, and 10 sacks. I would be really pleased. Anything more than that is just icing on the cake. Yeah. I like how you did that. Yeah. You like yeah, that? that was That's nice. delivery. Yeah. You know, using my voice, some I don't inflection. I feel like I should say anything after that. I yeah. should just let it, like, it linger. Nice pause. That's an effective, you're a good listener there. You're like, yeah, dramatic pause. Maybe we'll put a, in a sound effect there. Like, Ooh, that'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right, that's going to do it for this week's episode. Uh, We'll be back next week talking about the offensive side of the ball. In particular, who will have more receptions next season, Corlin Sutton or Jerry Judy? That's for next week, Eric. Okay, I'll be thinking on it. Uh, We forgot to remind people at the beginning of the show, but how do you watch this? How do you get involved in the neutral zone? Well, you can uh, send us an email at neutralzoneshow at gmail.com. You can call in 707-NEUTRAL. 
You can tweet directly at us at Eric Delala with an A, at Phil Milani with a PH. Non traditional. No, yeah. Non traditional. Of course. Uh, Phil, you can also follow along on YouTube, leave a yes. comment, smash that subscribe button. How does somebody do that? You would go, I think you look for the smash the sub- you'd look for the subscribe button and then you'd go and smash it. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you do that. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be nice. I like that. Because we read the comments every week. We do. We love the comments. And when we when we come back for training camp, Phil. We're going to be all over there. There's going to be a lot of comments. Be a lot. Yeah. Our hair has been looking pretty good. It's been, I'll just, it's say, been nice. I'll just yeah. say it. I'll just say it. I'll, be, I'll go out of there and say it. Yeah. Well, we'll be na- uh, back next week talking a little bit of offense. Until then, for Eric Dalala, I'm Phil Milani. You've been listening to The, the Neutral, Neutral Zone. Zone.